Kids Productions. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. Le Flip in the building. Hey, Money M's, you ready? Let's go. Welcome to M Street, the hottest podcast. And all that cash and money, M's pockets, it look like thigh pads. He talking trending topics, he ain't no carbon copy. We talking sports, music, and fashion, and other options. To get us out the hood and keep that paper coming And I smoke cones, not backwards, I'm about to blaze a onion These rappers flexing on the gram and they got fake cheddar This intro was provided to you by Flip Mayweather All right, all right, all right. Yeetie, yeetie, money else, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, Lil Flip in the building, screwed up click Welcome to Elm Street Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, man? Welcome back to another episode of Welcome to Elm Street. I'm your boy, I'm your host, Money Elms, man. What is good, man? Hopefully we didn't keep y'all waiting for another episode, but, um, you know, we're back. We gotta stay consistent, we gotta keep grinding, making them wheels turn. So, um, man, I got a special guest out here, man, today. Another H-Town legend, man. I gotta give it up to my boy. Set coast. Man, what's happening? Oh man, just not much. Just out here, just chilling, man. Uh, I want to appreciate you coming through, man. I know you just landed straight from the H right now. Yeah, man. I told you I would, and I'm a man of my word. So here I am, solo dolo. Yeah, hey, yeah, man. Appreciate it, man. Literally just pulled up a few minutes ago, and uh, you know, straight to business, straight to work. You know, I like that, man. So. Um, I, was, I asked you earlier, I said, how was the, how was the scene? How was the drive? Nah, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing good about the drive from Houston <laughs> to Dallas. It ain't nothing but grass and trees, and that's about it. The most entertaining thing is seeing the people in the cars next to you. That's about it. It's nothing to look at. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. Most definitely. It's, it's crazy because, um, you know, sometimes I be driving through these, uh, these Dallas highways, and it, it never fails, bro. This never fails. Like, I'll pull up and and there'll be a pretty chick right next to me. And she like going hard, bro. Like she's like digging for old memories or something, bro. I'm like, Oh no. Oh yeah, bro. And it's 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 funny because I got this thing where I'm like, you know what? It's usually the prettier she is, the the crazier she's going at it, bro. Oh no. And I'm no. like, man, that's that's like crazy stuff right there. Yeah. And then my wife's like, so what are you doing looking over there? And I was like, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just driving and looking, you know, type, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, like you said, ain't nothing to look at, but yeah. other people besides you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just, you know, get right into it and uh, see what's popping out in the streets, man. Uh, kind of wanted to touch on these uh, subjects since you're from the H, you know what I mean? And, what better way to get your opinion from somewhere, you know, from your backyard? So, um, what did you think of the whole uh, Trey and Zero incident that went down on that uh, Tycoon weekend? Um, I I think first of all, acknowledging that them boys are related, right? Yeah, like they family. Um, when disagreements come to the point to where hands get thrown around yeah that's a bit excessive especially when we're talking about family members mm -hmm. but okay at the end of the day everybody's their own man you know you approach things however you do that's fine um but when i think of this certain scenario i think back to um when there was this divide between like baby and Lil Wayne, right? Yeah. Like Lil Wayne was trying to get away from cash money and baby was trying to keep him there. You know, he's the bread maker. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people jumped in with their opinions. Like Rick Ross uh, did a whole song talking about the situation yeah. and he kind of created this whole little beef between himself and baby, you know, just for jumping out there and saying something. Mm -hmm. Um, and 
they asked 50 Cent what he thought about the situation, and he said something that I thought was really smart, really intelligent. He said that he was going to reserve his opinion because at the end of it all, they're family, right? Mm. So while they might be going through what they're going through right now, let's say six months, a year, however long it takes, they're going to reconcile and they're going to be... They're going to go back to just being the family members that they are. And however they treat each other, that's how their family does. But that is not going to take away the fact that this other person came in and said what they said. Now the spotlight is on them. Like, yeah, now me and this person, we cool now. But that stuff you jumped out there and did, now we we still not off of that yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so now it's like, all right, we can see Baby and Lil Wayne chilling together. Mm -hmm. But... Now you still got Rick Ross's out there looking kind of some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he jumped in with his opinion. So I kind of like that stance where I won't really say too much in regards to who I feel was in the right, who I felt was in the wrong. All I can really say is I understand. Um, hey, man, like I said, we're men. And at the end of the day, if things reach this boiling point, it just comes out that way. Mm-hmm. Do I feel it was right that it was multiple people jumping on one man? Not at all. If that even was the case. Um, I saw the video of it. I saw it like once. I didn't rewind and go watch yeah, yeah. for who swung and did this and that. Um, but even still, like that's that's too much. If it's between you and a family member, y'all having y'all disagreements, if y'all gonna throw hands, throw hands. Mm-hmm. But ain't no need for somebody else to get involved. Why? Just because you take up for this person so much that you want to throw your hands in too? Or that person is not willing to throw their hands in? Which I know Trey and Zero, both of them, the type of men that they are, they're more than willing to throw their own hands. Mm -hmm. They don't need somebody to step in and do it. Um, So for anybody else to get in that mix, it's it's unwarranted. It, It shouldn't happen that way. Yeah. Especially in the public, it shouldn't happen that way. You know, just some people that just want that uh, that spotlight, even though when it's not, they spotlight. Yeah, that's what, that's what it is to be seen. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. at the end of it, I'm sure whoever was swinging went and bragged about it. Like, yeah, I was the dude that was on the video doing yeah. this and that. And I mean, not bragging like getting himself caught up, but bragging to you know his people. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you saw me. I got down for mine. I got down for, to rep for my people. You know what I'm saying? And it's cool to talk like that. But nah, if it's that family dynamic, just let them do that family thing. Yeah. That's it. it eventually, it'll resolve itself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how it usually is in family disputes. Yep. But yeah. So, um, so s- staying on the kind of on the same subject. Wait, uh, wait, wait. But what about you? How did you feel about it? Well, shit, you know what I mean? I feel the same way as you, you know, that, you know, it's a family affair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think there's certain things that should be kept behind closed doors. You know what I mean? But it just, we live in the age where, you know, that cell phone yeah. is right there in the reach. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now you have a uh, a video camera and a camera all in one. So, you know, people are ready to hit that record button. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, if they didn't want it out in the public, I think they should have just kept it behind closed doors. As soon as uh, that person made that mistake of whoever swung first, Mm -hmm. you know, apparently, I mean, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to blame it on maybe, hey, they were drinking. I mean, got to drink responsible. Yeah, you know, and then you end up making these these decisions that you, later on you got to live with. Yeah, because you can't take those things back. Yeah, most definitely, you know, and um, you know, to me, it's like I've always had this this uh this idea that everybody was somewhat united out there in the age, mm-hmm. you know, but but then you know, there's certain people from the age that be like, ah, oh, well, it's not really like that. Yeah. You know, it, it just kind of looks like everybody, everybody just gets along. Everybody's, you know, doing this, doing that. But in reality, you know, it's just everybody's kind of just doing their own separate thing. Yeah. Well, this this situation was unique because they were they are family. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not a matter of 
people from the age, whether or not they mess with each other, like these dudes have no choice. You know, they blood. Mm -hmm. That's family. So who knows how far back or how deeply rooted their disagreement is. It, uh, or if, if I, I know a lot of, of the public will speculate on what they were fighting about, mm. but who knows if that's even what they were fighting about to begin with. It could have been something completely different. Like I said, they, they known each other from childhood. Yeah. You know, like they grew up together. You don't know what the, them people was fighting over. So in the past, have you ever had an altercation with maybe a group member or a close associate that, uh, that you used to ride with you or an altercation? Uh, never to a point to where things were getting physical. Mm. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's always arguments. There's always people not seeing eye to eye or not thinking on the same page or wanting to do something different from what you're doing. There's always, there's always been that and there. I'm sure there will continue to be that in my life and the people that, you know, that I be around. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as it coming to somebody putting their hands on me or me having to put my hands on somebody. I don't think it'll, it'll get to that point. Um, you know, cause you can kind of see these things coming. Yeah. Like, especially with somebody that, that, you know, you know, you're around this person all the time, you know, their, their personality traits, you know, their body language, how they, how they, move when they speak to you mm -hmm. and when something starts going a little different you can kind of detect that all right this is going to a place that we haven't been yet mm -hmm. so it's at that moment where i feel like i can decide if i want to allow it to go there mm -hmm. then yeah we can keep escalating and see how much crazier this is about to get yeah or me being as level-headed as i am i fall back and be like all right we're going to have to revisit this argument another time. Because mm -hmm. right now, things is about to get real dumb. Mm -hmm. And we about to do something that can't nobody take back. Um, and that's just the level-headed side of me. Because I don't want to... I, I consider people to be my friend. Mm -hmm. Whether we feel the same way about a certain thing or not, that's my friend. And if I put my hands on my friend, I can't take that back. So... Just to be level headed, I defuse the situation for now. We're gonna come back to it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna still talk about this. We're gonna iron it out. But right now, nah. We're not in the right headspace to talk about this. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I personally don't like people getting me to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm not gonna give you that that much power over me. You know what I mean? Especially when somebody's looking for a reaction. Yeah. I mean, like you say, you can see it. You can see it coming. So, I mean, I'm the same way. I'm a di diverse. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go this way. Yeah. You know, I'm going to avoid the, the situation just because, you know what I mean? I know how I am and I know how how things can escalate really quickly. You know, so, yeah, I think it's about how you control it. You know, don't let that person you know, take that control away. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and at the end of the day, like you said, they're, they're family members. They'll be able to iron it out. Do you have any uh, any siblings? Uh, I got an older sister. Um, and then outside of that, uh, I got a stepbrother mm -hmm. that he and I are real close with. He he uh, does a lot of production and does... Uh, he helps me out with engineering and stuff like yeah. that as far as the music is concerned. Um, but like my sister, she's not involved in, in none of it. Um, that's but why, I, I, yeah, that's but why. But have y'all ever had any any conflicts, like as far as sibling conflicts? You oh, know? Uh, man, as far as me and my sister, I mean, I, I know when I was a little kid and uh, she would do stuff that aggravated me, like I would try to run after her like if she was another little boy you yeah. know what i'm saying and um but she's older than me so 
she was able to put me in my place pretty quick. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, oh dang, I was just thinking you're a girl. I'm finna just go over there and uh. Yeah. But now nah, she she put me in my place. Yeah. And then, but I mean on top of that too, like I grew up with in a household with just my mom and my sister. Yeah. So it didn't take me that long to understand what it means to respect a woman and and not try to get aggressive with a woman like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they instilled that into me early. Yeah. So I don't nah, that was never a thing. Uh my stepbrother though, like even him, we never we never got into any arguments that escalated towards um getting physical. Yeah, any kind of uh getting physical or nothing. There was one time I can kind of remember though, uh he and I used to go out drinking uh man almost daily and then one day we went out drinking and i was wasted i think he was buzzed he wasn't drunk but he dropped me back off to my crib and my lady was inside and i invited him to come up there with me it was an apartment he came upstairs with me and we walked in and my chick was like furious over something i don't know what she was mad at and like she started throwing stuff around and I'm like, whoa, 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 what is this? What's happening yeah. here? You know what I'm saying? Like she was livid. <laughs> yeah. Uh I don't remember what it was about though. But anyways, um, she started breaking things. And me and my drunk self, I was like, oh hell no. Nah. She gonna break this and that and this and that. I already know she is. So I, I get up to uh go make sure she wasn't finna do none of that and my stepbrother man i love that dude just the protector that he is he could already see where this was about to go if i got up mm. and went over there to where she was breaking stuff it was about it was probably about to get crazy but him he held me down like, no, you're not finna move. Mm. And I'm looking at him, you know, alcohol all in my system. I'm like, oh, no, you not gonna hold me down. You know what I'm saying? So my attention is now directed towards him. Yeah. Um, But as, as wasted as I was and as much as I thought I was, like, putting all my weight into wrestling him back, mm -hmm. nah, he had me, bro. <laughs> he had me pinned down. I was like, all yeah. right. Whatever happens, babe, you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, it was family. And yeah. 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 Bet you, y'all ironed it out and everything. And yeah, and it was it, like between me and him, that wasn't even a disagreement. That was just yeah. um, a a test of uh, physical prowess, I guess. Me versus him. Yeah. And this little wrestling match. Yeah. But I was like I said, I I was very inebriated. I mm -hmm. like to see him try that again. Today, <laughs> we'll see who comes out the victor. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so recently, uh, you know, uh, Sauce, you know, I seen this video clip where he was talking about, um, you know, rapping these days is uh, the most dangerous occupation mm -hmm. that uh, a young person could have. As as an you as an artist, what what's your take on that? Um, I think. I don't feel that way. I feel it, it all, it's all in how you carry yourself. Like, it's one thing to be an artist, to be a rapper. And so let's say, let's say you just a regular backpack rapper. Mm -hmm. Like you're not out there with jewelry. You're not out there with high fashion, none of that, right? You're not trying to stunt on nobody. You're not flexing on nobody. You're more passionate about the music itself. So you get out there, you jump out there and do your thing. You're trying to get your name out. And you have to put yourself into these places around these other people that have a specific mentality. Because, I mean, really, we all come from the same place. You know what I mean? Mm. It's not like it's not like you can expect to be a rapper and just automatically jump into uh, performing in coliseums. Now you finna do the hole in the wall clubs. You yeah. gonna have to do those. And the people that's in there, you know where they come from. Oh yeah. So 
yeah, you're going to be put in these situations around these types of people. So let's say we have the backpack artist and he's put in a situation around these types of people. It's it's not beyond possibility that something could jump off and, you know, somebody attacks him or somebody kills him. It's not beyond the realm of possibility, but it's not common either. On the other hand, you get these dudes that jump out there and they got all their jewelry on. Mm. They talking sh- all the cuss, uh, cuss yeah, yeah. they talking crazy shit. Yeah. And they building themselves up to be that person that you would be a fool to mess with. And you got these other people that's hungry. They're looking at him like, oh, you think that? You think you're untouchable? Because I see a neck full of everything I want. Yeah. You're not untouchable. I'll show you. So when you have a dynamic like that, and so Sauce Walker is obviously the flashy type, right? Yeah. He's always out there with his jewelry. So, yeah, in in his mind, the way he thinks about things Mm -hmm. is... He's finna go out there and have all his jewelry on standing in front of the wolves. And he knows it. And he knows he's going to. And it's it's not put past him that something could jump off. So for him, it feels like this is my job. This is what my duty is. This is what I'm known to do. This is my, uh, my image to get out there like this. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, it's dangerous. But it don't have to be that way. Like, ain't nobody saying, ain't nobody gonna take away somebody's credibility for being the artist that they are if they have on one less chain or if they have on no chain. You know what I mean? Yeah. It it don't take away from that. And if anything, if if you get out there in front of the wolves and you the artist that has all those chains, let's say you get out there and you didn't wear them that night, they're not gonna look at you like, all right, tonight's the night. They might think different, like, all right, maybe next time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's precautionary things that can be done. Like, maybe just wear your jewelry whenever you go do, like, I don't know, take your pictures, shoot your music videos, things like that. But when it comes out to getting around the public and people that, that don't know no better, ain't got what you got, but want it, mm-hmm. hey, man, just scale it back. Because you asking for trouble at that point. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. I, I don't feel like it's the most dangerous uh, profession to be in. That's crazy to think that's the most dangerous. Nah, it's you asking for problems, basically. Mm-hmm. If you say the rapper that jumps out there with all his jewelry on, telling people how hard he is, yeah, that's a dangerous profession. But you ain't got to do that. Mm-hmm. The people already came to the show to see you because they like your music. They want to see you do your music. So give them what they want. They don't need to see all this other stuff. They yeah. don't need a reason to jump on you like that. They don't need a reason to follow your ride back to the hotel or wherever you're going and shoot it up. That's stupid. I figure that at least if you're going to do something like that... You know, you, you got yourself some good security around you. Yeah, well, security is cool, but not everybody's gonna have security. Like, and not everybody needs security. If you if if it's to the point to where you feel like you need to hire security to be around you to protect you, you've already done too much wrong. Like you've already set yourself up. Yeah. And it's it's like why put yourself in that position? Like, me, I'll go anywhere, right? Mm. I don't put myself out there like that. So I could go rub elbows with anybody, and yet, like, yeah, I I have a certain degree of anxiety where I feel like I got to watch people because I don't know these people. Mm. But at the end of it, I know I'm not just out here looking crazy. Like, if I'm asking for somebody to approach me mm. with some nonsense, I don't. I'm not doing that. 
You know, I don't put myself out there like I'm the flashiest dude ever mm -hmm. and that you can't touch me. I'm not doing that. So just like here today, I drove out here by myself. You know, I ain't got nobody here to defend me if something jumps off because mm -hmm. I'm not putting myself out there like that. Yeah. It's, it's the possibilities of that happening is lower than if I would have just shown up, you know, with everything, I, you know, high fashion, all of that. Yeah. Just talking crazy shit. That's asking for problems. There's only a fool would do that. Yeah. So it almost seems like the, there's a new trend. And like I told you earlier, I was like, I was like, you know, it almost seems like that's the new pandemic. You know, all these artists kind of just dropping. Mm. You know what I mean? We had uh, uh, PM, uh, what was it? PMB uh, Rock that just got shot in LA just recently. And then we just had uh, a couple of days ago, we had a Dallas rapper that just got just got killed. Mm -hmm. uh, what what was his name, Kenneth? PFG uh, Strap. You know what I mean. So, I mean, it almost seems like it. You know, the proof is in the pudding. Almost. Well, no, I beg to differ because, like I said, we come from a certain area, right? We we yeah. we come up from the lower level of society. How much of that has anything to do with the fact that you put words together that rhyme? Like, we don't know that these people are just getting shot down. We don't know if that's something that stemmed from a disagreement they had before they even recorded a song. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, that's that could be something from, that could be some, some back home beef that they had with somebody over something that has nothing to do with that profession. So it's it's more common, I feel, that people would die getting shot up or, or however it happens, most of the time is it getting shot up. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of that stuff, especially with these artists that are not as developed, not as top tier, I feel like they still they probably even still stay in the same neighborhoods around the same knuckleheads mm -hmm. that beef with the same people that they did five years ago. And it's it was only a matter of time before they crossed paths and this and that happened. Yeah. But now because a person has a song out, you want to say, oh, he got shot down because being a rapper is the most dangerous profession? No, it ain't. He knew them people. Yeah. Like on a different level, he knew them people. Mm. So I don't think you could just chalk it up as it's because he was a rapper. I don't think that's fair. Yeah. I mean, you are right as far as, you know, who you put yourself around and you surround yourself. You know, what, what was that saying? You know, you know, tell me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know, the same scenario. Did, did you growing up or... In your growing up, as far as in your career, did you catch yourself cutting ties with certain individuals? Uh, yeah, I mean, I cut ties with 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 people, and sometimes it wasn't it wasn't even intentional cutting ties with people. Mm -hmm. Like more often than not, I just stop associating with somebody, and it won't even be because there was a problem. It'll just be because, you know, maybe their career is taking them somewhere and mine is taking me somewhere different. And it, and it's at this crossroad that we don't really compliment each other in a specific way anymore. And that's fine. Like, hey, more power to you. Do that. I'm going to do this. And, man, hopefully we make it through this thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And hopefully this the road will curve back around and we'll see each other at the finish line or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's been, man, maybe like one or two instances where I legitimately said, nah, you the type of person I don't want to be around. Like, like to detect something in somebody's character and be like, that person is 
is not who they're advertising themselves mm. to be around me. You know, that type of thing. Um, like, uh, even, even back, in, uh, doing the twin Berettas thing, like me and the dude quota, we was super tight for the longest, uh, man, we was out here in Dallas, like damn near every weekend going to the Trader's Village, yeah. you know, setting up shops, selling CDs and everything. Um, you know, we was always together, but somewhere down the line, I saw something that was like, no, nah, this is this is not who I thought you were. Um, and because of that, I don't, I don't really want to be around no more. Like, if you want to keep doing this thing, that's cool. You can head it. Yeah. I'm going to go do this other thing, though. Um, and it wasn't never no... When I see you, it's gonna be this or that. Mm -hmm. I don't ever feel like that with people. It's just always, if I cut you off, you cut me off, then we just cut off. You know, we ain't gotta bump heads about it. Yeah. Just be over there, I'll be over here. It's cool. We end up at the same spot for the same event, mm -hmm. something like that. We bump into each other. What up, bro? You all right? You good? All right, that's a bet. I'm gonna do my thing. Yeah. Check in with you next time. That's it. Keep it professional and 100 at all times. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? But that's, 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 that's cool. You know what I mean? That's, you don't keep no, uh, no animosity against anybody. You know, it is what it is. You know, just either it didn't work out or, you know, you sometimes just do grow as a person. Yeah. And sometimes outgrow the people that you, hung around with. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself in a different space, different mentality that you're like, you know what? Well, you know, I want to keep growing as an individual. So I got to surround myself with certain people to keep growing, right? to keep elevating. Right. So, but yeah, that's, that's dope, man. Let them know the people, uh, you know, a little bit about your, your little background as far as where you come from. Oh man. Born and raised in, in, Houston, man, on the north side, right? So the hospital I was born at is literally within like a 10-mile radius of anywhere I've ever lived in my life. Always been on the north side. Never been more than like 10 miles away from the same spot I was brought into this world. Oh. You know what I mean? Uh, and that hospital is not even there no more. <clears throat> they tore it down. Um, but yeah, I mean, just coming up, as a child, listening to, so for the first first half of my childhood, I was staying with my mom. My mom was always taking me and my uh, me and my uh, sister to the bars with her. Right, my mm -hmm. mom was was always into the nightlife, so she would take us out to the bars. It was rock and roll music playing. Sometimes it'd be a little bit of country music playing, um, and she also liked. Uh, like say Aretha Franklin type music, you know, like gospel in mm -hmm. a sense. She wasn't really religious. She just liked the sound of it. Yeah. Um, and for the second half of my childhood, I was living with my dad. My dad is more into blues music, um, rock music too, but not like the heavy rock, mm -hmm. more like the more classic rock, relaxed rock. Um, so I'm taking these influences, but I'm crazy about rap music. Mm. You know, they subconsciously put this other music in my head. I'm moving forward with rap though. So as I as I start working on trying to you know, figure out how to rap, you know, a whole lot of trial and error. Um, I, I I wouldn't say I was the type of person that was just born with the gift of being mm -hmm. able to rap now, I spent a long time writing song after song after song after song until I was able to make something that was it was all right to listen to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And as I continue to develop my sound and develop as a person, you know, but I, I, I wrote my first song when I was eight years old. And since then I was consistently writing songs. Mm -hmm. 
So by the time I'm in high school, I'm already, you know, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm in my high school selling cassette tapes because, you know, I would record my raps on a little karaoke machine. Yeah. I would make a whole tape. And then I would buy a bunch of blank tapes and I'll dub them, dub them, dub them, dub them, take them to school, sell them. Yeah. Five dollars. You ain't got five dollars? What you got? You got a dollar? All right. Give me your dollar here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, putting myself out there for that. And like people came to know me. They're like, that's him. That's what he does. He raps. You know what I'm saying? Teachers. That's He raps. He's not paying attention in my class. Don't bother him, no, because he's not messing with nobody. He's being quiet. Mm -hmm. Let him be quiet and write in his little notebook. You know what I'm saying? That's the way teachers looked at me. Um, and then all the while, you know, once I graduated from high school, now I have this skill that I developed after all these years. Mm -hmm. So it's only one thing in my mind that I want to do is now that... The world is free for me to go and do whatever I want. I don't want to go to college. I want to go rap somewhere. My homeboy was like, hey, you want to go kick it at the dope house? Yeah, let's go. Who was I'm, it? Uh, my homeboy, Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, he he rapped, to, uh, he rapped uh, the first time I ever got into a studio, he was there. Uh, he was rapping too. Um... He knew some people from Dope House. They showed up to that studio session. They invited him mm -hmm. to go to the Dope House and hang out. He extended that invitation to me. He was like, yeah, I'm going to go up there. You want to go with me? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I'm fresh out of high school. And so we went up there, and I don't know nobody there. He knows a couple people there, but he don't really know nobody there. Mm. Um. And so I'm just in the studio watching how everything is going down. And there's a dude, Jaime Payne Ortiz, had a had his own room at, at the dope house, his own little studio. So like Happy Perez was the main established, like Happy's the guy. Yeah. He got the big studio on the other side of the building. Mm -hmm. Payne was like this newcomer and they treated him kind of like, yeah, well, I guess we'll let you have this other room over here off to the side to do whatever you do. Yeah. Um, and obviously, he's come a long way since then. But at the time, that's where I found myself, in that little room with Payne. And he had a bunch of his homeboys that were in there, and Payne was making a beat. And he was like, anybody want to record to this? And a few people popped up like yeah i want to get uh, you know i got something for it and he just went around the room asking he didn't know me yeah he was just like how about you you got something for this i was like Shoot, yeah and so i recorded my little part and it was like a eight or 12 bar verse mm -hmm. i recorded it and he he was into it he, he pulled me to the side after after the night and he was like what are you doing tomorrow i ain't got nothing going why like, don't you come back up here again all right, I'll be here. And so I went the next night and mm -hmm. the night after that and the night after that. And I kept going. I was up there every day for at least two years before anybody took <clears throat> anybody of importance took notice yeah. as to what I was doing. Right? Like by this point, after two years, people they already know me around there. Like, hey, what up, Coast? You know, what's happening? Yeah. They don't know what I do. But it, after, like like I said, like two years, uh, Carlos SPM showed up to the dope house. And he went up to Payne and he was like, show me some music. Because he was putting together the first Screwston project. Mm -hmm. Compilation, bunch of artists. He needs music for it. Payne, show me some music. Payne was showing him all kind of different songs. Carlos wasn't feeling none of them. Mm -hmm. And then I was on a song that wasn't finished yet. So Payne didn't want to play it for him. It didn't have a hook on it. It didn't have a third verse on it, nothing. It was just me and Skrilla, my homeboy, me and my homeboy Skrilla was rapping on it. Yeah. 
he was like, all right, I don't got nothing else to show you. I'll show you this. And he played it. And Carlos, who had been talking shit about every song that he had played, the pain played before, mm -hmm. all of a sudden he hears this song and he jumps out of his chair and he's like this, give me this. And he's like, well, the song's not done. Give us, you know, give us a, a couple of days. We'll finish. We'll put a hook on it, a third verse and this and that. He's like, no, no, no. Give it to me just the way it is. Actually, and who is this person that's on the second verse? It was me. Mm -hmm. And he was like, him? Like, yeah. Like, oh, man, I didn't even know you rapped. Like, I'd be seeing you around here all the time. I didn't know that you could do that. So you would bump into SPM? Yeah, all the time. Hallway. They used to have weekly meetings out there. And, yeah. the, and the Dope House was like a big, it's, it's like a big warehouse with a loading dock, yeah. right? So I think it was like every, I forget if it was every Tuesday or Thursday, they would have these meetings out on the dock. And a lot of times the meetings were just uh, discussing the status of how everything was going on. Yeah. It was it was rarely ever about ideas of how to move things forward. It was just talking about where things were at at that time. Um, so, yeah, he would always see me at the meetings and stuff like that. Um, and like just wandering around the building. Yeah. Um, sometimes we would have full blown conversations, not about music. You know, we would just be at the dope house talking. Yeah. Or they used to have a ping pong table. We were all very competitive playing ping pong at the dope house. So a lot of times, you know, we get that camaraderie just because we play against each other and it's like, who could whoop who? Yeah. And it's like, I'm, I'm gonna get you next time type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So we was we always were cool in that sense, mm. but it didn't really speak to what I was there for. Yeah. So when he finally heard that and he was like, that's you? Bro, he put that out and then he started asking me to jump on some other stuff. What was the name of that song? Do you uh, remember? That? Yeah, no, the that first one was called Murderholics. And it was called that because it didn't have a name. It didn't have a hook for us to give it a name. Mm -hmm. Murderholics was a group that was under Dope House. It was uh, Skrilla and Monster. And both Skrilla and Monster knew what I did and they liked it. Mm -hmm. And they were extending the invitation to me to be a third member. So uh, Monster was supposed to be on that song. He was supposed to take the third verse. It never got to that point though before Carlos heard it and took it. So we just called it Murderholics. We had no other name. It was in the computer under the Murderholics folder because, yeah. you know, we were trying to create some music together. Mm. And so that's how it, that's, that's the reason why it's called that. Yeah. yeah. We didn't say it in the song or nothing like that. Mm -mm. Yeah, but then uh, he, he asked me to, to get on some other stuff for him and I, uh, you know, I started getting out on the road with them. And I remember, man, my first time, my first time going out on the road with Carlos, we went to uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. I'd never been on an airplane before. And actually, Bash was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but some came up, Bash couldn't go. So there's an extra plane ticket. Mm -hmm. And this is prior to any 9-11 stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like Rashid told me, hey, we got an extra ticket. You want to come? I was like, yeah, that's cool. What do I got to do? He's like, oh, all you have to do is go right, uh, right around the way to Fiesta, the grocery store. They make fake IDs. Mm -hmm. Go get. Uh, let's go get you a fake ID that says that your name is Bash's real name. And so that's what we did. I went to the grocery store. They took my picture. They printed me out a laminated ID. They had my picture, but Bash's legal name on yeah. it. Took it to the airport. They let me on the airplane just like that. Um, flew to Little Rock. Got to the spot. Carlos was already there. And I felt so, I felt so bad about this, but... <laughs> We we uh we're doing a show and Carlos already has his entire show planned out. 
because he does this everywhere he goes. Mm. He kind of does the same show everywhere he goes. I don't know this. I don't know how things go. This is like my first experience being here. So he's got, he's got however many albums out. And as the show progresses, he'll say something that relates to one of his albums. Then he'll get the album and he'll throw it out to the crowd. So I'm on the stage with him. All his CDs are right there for him to easily just grab, do his little speech about it and throw it out. Yeah. I'm standing right next to him. He he grabs one and throws it out and he leans over to me and says, don't let nobody throw these. The music is so loud. I heard, whenever you get a chance, throw these. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, okay, got you, no yeah. problem. So he's doing his thing, doing his thing. I start grabbing CDs and I'm holding them up. I'm standing behind Carlos. I'm holding up these CDs and the crowd is seeing me. They know I'm getting ready to throw them. So yeah. they're going nuts. They're like, right here, right here, throw it over here. And Carlos is just feeling like, oh man, they're really into this song. Yeah, yeah. He don't know I'm behind <laughs> him doing that. Yeah. And so then he comes to his next uh, pausing point in his set and he goes to the CDs and he's like, I told you not to throw any of them. I was like, bro, I thought you asked me to not, uh, I thought you told me to throw them all out. And he was like, you're so stupid. He was pissed. And then uh, after the show, we got back in the limousine. He had a limousine. I hopped in the limousine with him. And, uh, I told him, I said, hey, man, I'm so sorry. I could have swore you told me to throw them out. He's like, no, nah, nah, I, I told you not to throw them out. But don't don't, don't dwell on it too much. It's, it's all good. It's in the past. I tell you what, though, I'm going to make a whole bunch of money off of your corny ass. He's, and he told me that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. And I, hey, we, we, we made some history together. Yeah. Did he make a whole bunch of money off of me? Sure, he made some money off of me. Did I make money off of him? Yeah. So it was a win win. Yeah. Yeah. For both teams. Mm hmm. But that's just, I kind of derailed. You were asking about the uh, beginnings of my career, and I ended up with that. But no, and then that, um, after Dope House, um, you know, I started, I started running around with Chingo. But be, before all that, how did you uh, link up with uh, with with Carter Key and started the, oh, the Twin Beretta run? Yeah, so when I was first at the Dope House, like I said, I went with my homeboy. Mm. He kind of knew people. I don't really know people. Um, by nature, I'm an introverted person. I don't just go up to people and create conversation and create friendships and this and that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that type of person. Quota. I had already been at the dope house for a good little minute. Quota one day just shows up and he's thinking this is like a a regular recording studio where you could just go in and inquire about how much is studio time and you know pay your little fee, record mm-hmm. your songs and leave with a CD. He thought that that's what the type of facility it was and it wasn't. It was an actual record company. Yeah. But he goes up there um he starts catching a vibe on how everything is going. And he lives like two streets over. You know what I'm saying? So it's in his neighborhood. The dope house is in his neighborhood. So he starts showing up all the time too and hanging out. Um, He is more of a people person. Like he had no problem just automatically creating friendships with people. It took me forever to get comfortable around. Yeah. He did that effortlessly. And he and I got cool. And then uh, Carlos and I had a discussion one day, and he told me he wanted me on the label. And I was already like trying to look into the future of how this was going to go. Mm-hmm. I was like, you're going to offer me a position on the label. You're going to put me on tour. I'm going to go out there and I don't know how to be around people. I'm just that much of an introvert. I already know it's going to give me all this anxiety. But 
I had this idea. I was like, hey, if you want me on the label, I want to bring Quota into this too. And Carlos was like, can you rap? I was like, yeah, he's he's dope. Mm -hmm. He's like, if that's what you want to do. And so uh, not too long after that, Carlos' brother Tootie approaches the both of us. He's got paperwork in hand. He's like, hey, let's go sign it. Let's go out to eat. Let's sign these contracts and get y'all going. And so that was like a uh, that whole, that's how we became a group was I was leaning on him to be that person they could talk to promoters, talk to DJs, talk to whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's still make dope music together. But I know I don't I don't have these characteristics, these qualities that you do. And that's gonna be extremely helpful. So and that's why I was like, all right, let's link up and do this. I I pulled him into the whole deal. And yeah, shoot, we traveled at least two or three tours together. How many albums did y'all cut together? Uh, we did two <laughs> albums. Only one of them was released. Uh, the second album, we completely finished it. Like we even got it mastered. Like it's it was done, done. Mm -hmm. Um, but Carlos had got locked up. Money started going towards lawyer fees, court fees, mm -hmm. this and that. The attention started being taken away from uh just work and productivity and stuff like that mm -hmm. and at, uh, at this point everything was directed towards how can we help carlos in his situation so and, and it's not like you know they just said no nah, we don't want to put out y'all's project because it's not good or nothing like that they weren't really putting out nobody's project at the time mm -hmm. everything was going towards get Carlos out of his situation. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's the way it was for a long time. Like his 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 trial and, and everything that came after it was this whole drawn out thing. You know what I'm saying? Because they immediately were, were uh, when he got convicted, they were immediately like, all right, appeal. What do we got to do? You know, that's, that's where their minds were. It wasn't no longer about we got a company to run. It wasn't like that. So, um, you know, and for a long time, that's how things was, uh, wasn't really nobody putting out albums unless you were Bash, you know, yeah. or Juan Gotti put out an album in that time. Um, but outside of that, there wasn't a whole lot being cranked out of there. So you got, yeah, I felt like you got kind of got put on the back burner. Yeah, but it, it's, it's not like, I don't think either of us took it personally. We knew why it was yeah. happening. You know, and hey, man, Carlos is our boy. At the end of the day, that's our boy. He going through something. I got this much respect for him to know that right now it ain't about me. It's about making sure that he's going to be good. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it was never like, dang, they just threw us on the back burner because yeah. they don't respect us. They don't like us. Nothing like that. Because, I mean, I remember when that, that first album came out, I mean, y'all had the streets buzzing. We was everywhere with it. We yeah. was everywhere with that project. And it it, it warranted another one. You know what I'm saying? That's why yeah. we recorded a part two. We finished it, mastered it. It was ready to go. We shot the artwork for it and everything. Yeah. Dope House paid for all of that. You know? So it was ready to move on it until this other situ uh, situation happened. Yeah. And so everything just kind of pumped the brakes on it, you know? Man, that would have been double to see, most definitely. Yeah. I, I every, every once in a while, I'll still go back and listen to that unreleased album. Yeah. And, you know, people always hit me up and be like, man, just put it out. Just put it out. For the time when we created it, it would have been a good album. Yeah. But if you listen to it now, it sounds so dated. How dated? So dated. Like, you remember when... Kanye West was first getting popular. He had those soul samples that were yeah, like yeah. high pitched. Yeah, 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 We had a lot of that on there. So when you hear them now, you're like, dang, that reminds me of back in yeah, 2010 yeah. uh, type of hip hop. Yeah, that's when we recorded. If we put it out now, it's not going to fit nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I mean, the good thing is that you still have a, a copy of that. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Man, I would love to hear that one day, bro. On an exclusive, bro. You know, because like I said, I was a fan of y'all's music. You know what I mean? Mm. When y'all came out, you know, I had the CD. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, we actually got to do a project. You know, got to do a song with my boy, uh, shout out to Boss Vegas. You know, put you on that album right there. So, uh, Boss Hog, as a matter of fact, you can find it on YouTube. You know, y'all did y'all's thing, and uh, that was kind of one of the main reasons we're like, hey, we got to get Twin Brothers on the album. Yeah. You know, y'all was doing noise, but um, man, that's 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 crazy that, you know, you don't know the back end of some of these stories of these artists, and, you know, that's, that's one of them right there that, you know, we could have had a second Twin Brothers album, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah, and not only that, it, it could have been just a co-solo the whole way through had I been more of a people person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, man, God made me the way I am, and I I, I thought it a smart idea to pull somebody in that, that kind of balanced out what I didn't possess about myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I know you're real cool with, uh, with Lucky. Mm-hmm. You know... So let, let us know how I guess how that relationship uh, came down because I had I had heard once that uh, the, the way y'all met you know as far as how you, you were hearing that this there was another dope MC yeah and uh, you've all, you know everybody always you know in the rap game they always feel like you know they're the they're the dopest mm -hmm. so how how did that whole scenario how did it go down so I'm at the dope house right mm -hmm. and I'm I'm like 18, 19 years old. And I'm already up there doing my thing. I'm rapping on stuff. People on the lower tier of artists mm -hmm. already know who I am and what I do. So much to the effect that, like I said, Murderholics was a duo. It was two rappers, but they saw me and they are like, hey, we want you to be a part of this because mm -hmm. you're dope. Yeah. You know, people were giving me props like that. Like, man, get on this song, feature on this song, man, be in our group type of thing. You know, they were talking good about me. Now, we catch wind that uh, Lucky is coming to record with somebody up there. And they're like, oh, man, Lucky's coming through. Man, he got this this song. He was spitting this. He said this. And it was, it was man, he's, he's like the dopest Mexican rapper. He's going to be the next SPM type. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, after SPM passes the torch, it's going to be this kid. And I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all are just saying all these same things about me. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, bring this dude through. Yeah. You know, I want to see what he's all about. You know, I'm back and by this point I have an ego, right? Yeah. Like, 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 yeah, I want to size him up. Bring him through here. And that night, Lucky shows up. And I'm expecting, I don't know what I'm who I'm expecting to walk through the door. If I'm expecting like lights and sparkles or whatever <laughs> yeah. to start you know clouds of uh come across the floor i don't know what i expected when lucky walks in but i didn't expect lucky like he was a small dude mm -hmm. he was really reserved he walked in he shook hands with the people that he knew and then he just sat down and they were like all right this is the song you know, we want you to feature on the song. They played the beat for him. He was like, all right, that's cool. He looked around, saw some paper over there. He had to pull a pen out of his pocket. Just started writing. You know, he's not talking to nobody. I'm in, I'm in the far side of the room in the corner just watching him. I'm like, man, it can't be the guy that they're talking about. And then he gets up and records his verse that he wrote. In record time, like way faster than I could ever put a verse together. And he just killed it. And I'm like, oh, I see why they say what they say about him. He got something about him. Yeah. Um. So anyways, after they do the, the song, everybody goes out on the dock. Now we're, now we're on chill mode, right? Mm -hmm. We're out on the dock. People are talking to Lucky. And... I walk up to introduce myself, but before I can introduce myself, somebody introduces me in, to him. And they're like, this is Coase. He was on that Murderholic song. And he was like, wait, are you the 
one on the second verse of the Murder Holly song. I'm like, yeah, that's me. He was like, oh man. And he started showing me so much love. He was like, man, I didn't know Dope House had anybody that could spit like that. And I was like, oh yeah. And so, you know, at that now I'm like, yeah. okay, he giving me props. I'm giving him props back. So I'm like, man, you what you did right now, it was cold, man. And we just got cool like that. Hey, at the end of the night, most of everybody had took off. Me and Lucky was still there chilling, talking. Uh, even to this day, I still tease him because uh, he had this, uh, it was like a Honda, I think it was a Honda Civic. But it was like an old model, like probably the first Civic they ever came out with. Yeah. And it, was, it was a Dookie Brown Honda. And I, I tease him about it so much so that uh, he had said something in a rap one time. And he was like, came a long way from that Dookie Brown Honda. Because I used to tease him about that. Because <laughs> he would talk all this crazy stuff about you know cars and yeah, this and that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I always, uh, I like to revisit that time when we first met like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we be cool. we've been cool ever since. And then now he's he's on a different journey. Yeah. Yeah, he found God. And, you know, that's... That's that's what carries him now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he still does music. Yeah, no, definitely. And he he uh I have a studio at home, so he'll come to my house and record. You know, he'll he'll uh while I'm not completely transitioned into making Christian music like he is, mm -hmm. hey man, you my brother. You wanna record Christian rap? Come over. Free. Mm -hmm. You ain't gotta give me nothing. Just come through, kick it with me, share the word with me. Mm. You know, put me up on something that I don't already know. Yeah, teach me. Matter of fact, you say something in a verse, I never heard that before. I got questions. Enlighten me. You know. Yeah. And so it's a good, it's a good relationship that way. Yeah. Um, you know, because at first when I seen the transition, you know, I was like, I was like. Cause it kind of like, it almost seemed like it happened overnight, but you know, us that, you know, are not have contact with them like that. You know what I mean? It seems like that for us, mm. but I'm pretty sure there was a transition, certain things that went down to where he got to that point. By the time he released music, you know, there had already been the whole, you know, the things that he already gone through. Yeah. So, you know, cause I've also, you know, seen stuff where, you know, there's, there's rappers that they be like, They'll say they go into that, you know, trying to go into that realm, the Christian world, mm -hmm. but they do it for the wrong intentions. They right. do it for the money. Yeah. Not really because it's genuine and that's what they're doing, that they're following Christ. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, there was a couple of stuff that was circulating, but but then as I kept watching, I was like, oh, no, he's he's real about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, as a matter of fact, I had reached out to him, too. You know, trying to get him on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, um, so I've seen it. So, but uh, like I said, it's it's genuine. I see him doing his music, and then you know what I mean. And you know, salute. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's following something that he's believing in, and at the at the age, you know, the the time that we're in, you know, there's not a lot of people that will be brave enough to. You know, leave everything behind. Yeah, definitely. You know, so I definitely, you know, I got, I got to, you know, salute him on that. Yeah, know. and 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 you're right. He did catch a lot of people that doubted the authenticity of what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was something he had to, he had to power through. Like even people in the Christian rap community were looking at him like that. Like, man, you're not serious. Like the uh, like. Kingdom Music Group is one of the largest uh, Christian rap labels. They hear about Lucky coming through, making all this noise. Lucky uh, got a song, it's on the radio doing this and that. And they looking at him like, okay, we see you, but is it real? It's to the effect to where he just had to continue his journey, his path, to show everybody that this is not just something I'm putting on for yeah. you know, views or to put my hands into a different pot of money that I wasn't in before. This is real. Yeah, He had to prove himself. And then 
Kingdom mu Music Group was like, hey, man, let's do this and that. You yeah. know what I mean? Let's link up. And then they create that relationship. But, like, it just it, is back to what I'm saying. He had to prove himself. Yeah. He had to show not only the fans that he had already in, uh, generated over his entire career, he had to not only prove it to them yeah. that he's a new person, he had to prove it to the people that he was now rubbing shoulders with. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I'm one of y'all. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. He had to prove it to everybody. But I, I don't think he should, you know, he shouldn't have to, you know what I mean? Because, you know, at the end of the day, who is we to judge you know what I mean? As far as in a perfect world, in a perfect world, that's the case. But I, w I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past the realm of possibility to think that somebody had jumped into uh, making Christian rap or any type of religious music mm -hmm. with a hidden agenda, and to only get called out for it and be like, "Hey." That person was fraud. Yeah, yeah. That person yeah. was phony. We need to be more conscious about who's trying to step into this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, in a perfect world, you ain't got to prove yourself to nobody. But, yeah. hey, man, I know that that type of thing happens all the time. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like when they talk about uh, healthy people that get into the, um, uh, the, what is it, the disabled Olympics or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because they think this is going to be their way in and be able to generate all this money out of it. You mm. know, that's how they're going to get their 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 ticket, basically. Mm -hmm. And so that's how people look at that, too. Yeah. Like, are you doing this for the right reason or not? Nah? So you, you got to prove yourself. So how was the, the journey for you? Because I also seen that, uh, that you were baptized mm -hmm. recently. You know, how was that experience? It was, so the experience itself, being baptized itself, like, yeah, you get put into the water and you come back up and now you're baptized. Yeah, that's true. But the feeling that you get when you do it, you feel cleansed. You feel clean. It's like, it's a monumental thing mm -hmm. to where you know from this moment you're making a declaration to where you will spread the word of Jesus wherever you go at, at whatever opportunity. You know what I mean? And that's not to say that I'm going to be like, hey, 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 whatever we talking about, nah, skip all that. Let's talk about Jesus. That's not that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're saying. That's just that's saying if the opportunity presents itself, if we having this talk man to man, mm -hmm. and I can see and and I pick up on something, and I'm like, man, if he only knew this, if he only thought about it this way, man, let me let me spread this information that I got. Like, let me let him know. Hey, maybe he accepts it. Maybe he rejects it. I did my part. I did. I, I, I took the vow when I was baptized that that's what I'm going to do mm -hmm. in these instances. And I fulfilled that. I did that. You know, how the next person takes it, it's on them. But that's just a part of being baptized. Like, yeah. you 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 make that claim that you're going to put yourself out there that way. So, like I said, it was, it was, it, it, it felt like a cleansing type moment to where, Almost, almost to the sense of, I don't really feel negatively about things anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I feel too cleansed to to think that way. Yeah. Like I'm thinking towards the positive things. I'm thinking towards uplifting things, not degrading people, degrading myself, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so. Yeah, in that sense too, it was it was a monumental occasion. That was dope. Mm -hmm. That was dope. Uh, big milestone in your life. Yeah. So <clears throat> I wanted to ask you about your music, cause um, but more I guess talking about your older music, not more of your current stuff. Okay. Uh, I've always, but correct me if I'm wrong, 
I've always thought that, you know, there was a, I guess, like a hint of darkness, you know what I mean? As yeah. far as, uh, so I've always wondered, I was like, well, I wonder, you know, like I said, if, if it was just me or, you know, some of the stuff that uh, you were rapping about, mm -hmm. certain stuff that you went through, certain things as a, as a kid, you know, certain experiences that made you look at life different to where it was reflecting in your music. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'll tell you this, there was a point in time when I was still trying to find my sound, I was trying to make the same type of flashy music like Lucky was doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, like back on that Murderholic stuff, I was talking about balling and pimping hoes and yeah. all of that same generic stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was cool, but I would also dabble in just making music that would express my actual feelings. And I remember being in the studio with uh, Jaime Pan Ortiz, and I recorded a song on one of his beats. And after I finished it, and it was one of these songs where I was talking about um, just what it what it is to be human man like the emotions that we go through it was it was um it was a really heartfelt song and he pain told me he was like all that other stuff that you do is 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 great but these types of songs is what's going to get you longevity this is stuff that people can relate to this is the type of music that people will put on when they're feeling a certain way, mm -hmm. this is an outlet for them. Like you're speaking for them. If you continue to do music like this, then you know, you'll know you have a following bigger than you can imagine. And I was like, Shh, that's a bet. Because honestly, doing the stuff about balling and all of that, like, it's fun for what it is, but that's not who the eight year old child that first wrote a, his first rap. Mm -hmm. That's not what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't just trying to be some some dude in it for clout and nothing like that. No, nah, I wanted to be an artist. Yeah, I wanted to showcase my artistry and not just copy somebody else's music. So I I I took what he said to heart. And I started writing a lot more things that had to deal with, you know, just being human. The things, you know, the good things that we go through, the bad things that we go through. And in a lot of instances, I'm writing music to help people cope with what they go through. And yeah, it's depressing stuff. But that's me trying to lend myself to people. So like, hey, don't feel like you by yourself. Don't think that you're the only one that's going through that. Mm. Others can relate to what you're going through. Matter of fact, here's a song to help you get through this. And yeah, it it, it kind of gave off that tone like Coast is a, a depressing rapper. Like most of his songs are depressing. But that's not really what it was. It was yeah. just me trying to show people that you know, I understand. Yeah. Like, don't don't feel like don't feel like you have to give up because nobody gets you. Mm -hmm. Like, nah. Here, listen to this. So, I mean, basically, that's kind of the reason why I asked you the question. You know, because I've always wondered. You know what I mean? And you know, as now I now I know mm -hmm. the answer to that, and it, and it makes me look at now the music. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna check out some of, uh, you know, pay more close attention to what you're saying. Yeah. To decipher, okay, you know, he's he's helping people heal. Mm -hmm. You know, by the way of uh, the lyrics, uh, using your platform. Yeah. You know, but that's dope, man. You know, now that I get to know that insight, you know, it's uh, it's dope to know that about about you and I like knowing new stuff about artists that I didn't know. Right. Like, you know, okay, that's cool. You know, I didn't know that about them, but 
you know, you get to know somebody and, you know, you find out new stuff about that person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, you sharing that. <clears throat> and then, um, so I wanted to ask you, um, the new album, now that one, you know, it, 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 it's, it's totally, I guess, different than what I'm accustomed to hearing. You talking about the V? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. You know, I'm not going to say, you know, that I didn't like it, whatever. No, it's, you know, not just because you're here, you know what I mean? I actually do like the track, you know, the, the project. And, um, what was the inspiration behind, uh, making that, that album? Uh, so the entire project is about a girl, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Vanessa, hence the V. The entire project is about her. It's intended for her. Like I created it for an audience of one. If nobody else liked it, or if everybody hated it except she liked it, that was good enough for me. That was the intentions the whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, but the music itself was something that I've always wanted to do, regardless if it was a project for a specific person. Mm. Like, I just really enjoy making music, making songs about the topic of love. Like, not focusing on myself, but making a song for someone else. Like, how another person might make me feel or how I see another person in a specific light for their personality, for the way that they are. Like, I like stuff like that. I don't always want to talk about myself. Mm. I'm the dopest this, I'm the hottest that. Really, I prefer to just talk about how somebody else makes me feel. You know, that's that to me is the type of thing to where I know if nothing else, at least one person can cherish that. And it'll be that one person. Mm. But hey, maybe somebody else might get it too. Yeah. Somebody else might be able to dedicate that to somebody. You know, say, hey, this is how I feel about you. The way he say he feel about this girl, this is how I feel about you. You know? So uh, that type of thing is is primarily what I enjoy doing, making songs like that. But this, yeah, this was the first project that I, I'd ever done where I didn't rap on it. Mm -hmm. I was just singing on everything. And it's not like anybody had, it's not like nobody never heard me sing before. I yeah. always sing on everything. Yeah. All the way back to my Dope House days, I was singing on stuff. The Murderholic song, I was singing on it. Yeah. So it wasn't like so completely out of the wheelhouse for me to do this. Mm -hmm. It was just the first time I did a project where I wasn't rapping on it. Yeah. You know, I've always had that balance in there, but not this time. And I like it a lot being able to do that. And it's because it, it and it's going uh, it's going into something that somebody I said in the, uh someone else's interview um that when I start to feel like I know my sound, it frustrates me. Because I don't want to be known for a specific sound. As soon as I feel like I have a handle on a particular sound and people start to know me for that, I switch it up completely. And that's kind of what happened here. Like, I jumped out there with uh, Garza and mm -hmm. Buns and we did the whole Brown by Honor thing. And I'm like rapping, 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 rapping. Mm -hmm. Like trying to keep up with them because they so dope. Yeah. And I feel like, all right, this is starting to become what people are knowing me for right now. Mm -hmm. Switch it up. I'm going to do a whole project where I'm not rapping on any of it. And for me, that even though it's a bit chaotic, because it's mm -hmm. like, how do you even promote that? If everybody's expecting something from you, how do you promote now? Now you're not giving them that. You're giving them this other thing. As chaotic as that is, for me, it's like a relief. It's like I don't have to be who somebody expects me to be. Like, I could just change it up whenever. And I can have this completely different identity. I mean, always staying true to myself, my ideals, mm -hmm. talking about what I want to talk about. 
with just the way I present it to people. Like, hi, you thought you was going to get all this rapping, rapping? Yeah. I'm not rapping at all. But tell me how you feel about it. Oh, man, this new project was it was dope. I didn't, I didn't know you could do this, or I didn't know you could do it like that. And like, yeah. Yeah. That's what I, that's, that's what makes me want to keep doing music. It's just new ideas. I mean, other than that, if, if, if I was still rapping, let's say I was, the song we did, however long ago that was, let's say I still rap that day to day, that, that way today. Mm -hmm. It's like, So what? I I wouldn't even be sitting in front of you. You wouldn't be interviewing me. You would be like, yeah, we did a song back then. That dude, don't nobody know where he's at no more. You know, he he was part of a sound back then, and he yeah. never got over it. I I don't want to be labeled like that. Yeah. Like nah, man. I might not. I might not go with the trends that everybody else is going with, I might not sound like how everybody else sounds right now. Like, let's say back then, I sounded like how hip hop might have sounded back then. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that today I have to sound like how hip hop sounds today. Mm -hmm. Just so long as I'm doing something different. Yeah. Something that different for me. Something that isn't expected of me. If I keep that up, I could do it for my whole life yeah. and not get bored with it. So you said that the album was, uh, you wrote it for a, a female, right? Mm -hmm. Does she like it? Yeah. So she is so low key that she knew that I was doing it before it came out, right? Like mm -hmm. I told her. Initially, I wrote one song for her, showed it to her. She liked it. And then I wrote another one. I didn't show it to her. And I wrote another one, and I didn't show it to her. And then it was like, I told her, hey, not intentionally, but I'm kind of working on an entire project that's kind of based off of you. And she's so, like, reserved and low key mm -hmm. to where that don't it don't blow her head up actually it scares her because her initial thought was oh that's sweet but then it starts coming to the point to where I'm putting this music out mm -hmm. like it might be a song here a song there it's not the it's not the actual drop date yet but people are starting to hear new music from me mm -hmm. and it's about her yeah she feels kind of weird about that because she's not in the in the in the limelight or nothing like that. She's just a regular girl. Mm. One that it, that I developed feelings for. Yeah. And so for her, this attention is she didn't ask for any of it. Yeah. She's very uncomfortable with it, actually. That's why, you know, I would never put her personal information out there for people to go find her. Yeah. Cause she don't, you know, she's not part of this life. Yeah. Um, so when the project did come out, she didn't listen to it right away because it scared her. It made her think that maybe I was giving up details that, you know, she's so, she's so not part of this life details that are supposed to stay just between us. She, I don't know what she expected me to be on there saying. Yeah. But, you know, I kept it respectful, I would say. Um, but, yeah, she was hesitant about hearing it because she didn't know what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. um, but it was probably like two or three weeks after the project came out that she finally told me that she listened to it. And, no, she, she likes it. Um, she told me nothing but good things about it, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I won't, yeah. I won't give too many details about it, but I would say my intentions were to make a project for an audience of one, and I pleased that person. Yeah. So one of my uh, favorite songs on the album, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Uh, you say uh, you can't say shit about the girl of my dreams. Mm-hmm. You know that that one right there. You know that track. You know I was like, okay, yeah, that's the intro. And uh, I was that's that's what more that captivated me right there. Mm. You know when I'm post a flyer, I'm usually posting that song with it. Yeah, you know because you know even my lady, you know she she liked it. So you know I like this. I was like, yeah, it's dope. You know what I mean? It's, I was like, you know, it's something different. Mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, I've been following your career since back in the day. So when I heard it, I was like, okay, you know, it gave me something different. You know what I mean? Instead of, you know, either the, the same old. You know what I mean? And uh, I gotta say, you know, I was I was happy to hear that. You know, you know, especially from you. You know, versatile artist. Yeah. And then uh, so I was gonna ask you. Um, did uh who were your you would say you would be your, some of your influences that because you're dope as a as a lyrical artist but then you also mix in that that melodic r and b kind of mm -hmm. to some of your hooks and some of your verses who would you say are some of your inspirations on that um my parents just stuff that they had me listening to when I was a kid. Like mm. I said, going from living with my mom and the atmosphere being one way, then the contrast of it, living with my dad and the atmosphere being this other way, you know, just the contrast and types of music. Like they say no idea is original. Everything has been done before, especially mm. in music, right? I can't I can't sing a melody that hasn't already been sang. Where did I get it from? I don't really know. But I know I've heard it before. Mm. Probably heard it when I was a little kid, you know, being with my mom. Probably heard a song that subconsciously stuck with me. That little part mm. stuck with me. Same thing being with my dad. That one part of that song stuck with me. And to where now, it's like, I can't tell you who, what specific artist I would pull from, pull ideas from, stuff like that. I can't tell you because I don't even know where it comes from. Mm. I just know that it's, it comes from being exposed to different types of music. Um, but I, I love that because there's too many artists, especially in rap, mm. too many artists where you play their song and I'll be like, he's a Kevin Gates fan. Oh, how did you know, bro? Really? You sound like Kevin Gates in your song. Yeah. Like, oh, he's a uh, young boy fan. He uh, this and that. You can hear it. Mm -hmm. Like, though, I, I, I don't want to hear you pretend to be the other, some other artist. If I wanted that, I'd just go listen to that artist. I'll just go listen to Kevin Gates. Yeah, I want to listen to you pretend to be Kevin Gates. To become like a Great Valley artist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I take pride in the fact that I don't know where I pull this stuff from. Mm -hmm. And can't nobody point it out and be like, he got it because he listens to this. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with me. Because I'm the source. I don't even know where it comes from. Yeah. But like I said, no idea origin is original. It came from somewhere. But it's 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 all in here and it comes out in, in an attempt to sound like my own identity, my own uh individual artist, not sounding like nobody else. That that to me is the best part of doing what I do. Just can't nobody say I sound like somebody. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody say I'm biting off of this or that. If what I'm doing was part of a trend that was going on right now and this trend uh, washes up, mm -hmm. I'm not washing up with it because I wasn't part of that. Yeah, I'm doing my own thing, not sounding like nobody. Let's say, let's say, uh, Kevin Gates gets caught up for, I'm not even gonna make up a scenario, but let's say he gets caught up for like the, oh my God, I never would have expected. Yeah. That's so embarrassing. Oh, you listen to Kevin Gates. Oh man, you're a fool. Let's say, let's say that scenario happens. Mm. All these people that rap just like him, 
You think they're going to still try to rap like him? <laughs> Knowing that now he's a punchline? Yeah. No, they're not. They're going to switch it up. Sound like somebody else. Yeah. I don't have that problem because I don't sound like nobody. I'm not following what nobody doing. Mm -hmm. I just do my own thing. Let it come out the way it does. Yeah. So you think you would uh, ever do a, another track with uh, Coda King? Um, I wouldn't say I'd never do it. It's not something I'm actively looking to do. Yeah. Um, and I mean, since we've we've gone our separate ways, mm -hmm. I know that we've ended up on the same songs together, not intentionally. Like, yeah. You know, maybe somebody might get me for a feature, and they also got him for a feature. You know what I'm saying? And actually, yeah. that has happened before, and. I was cool with it. The only thing I asked of the person that got the feature was, hey, perfectly fine. Do me a favor, though. Don't promote this as featuring Twin Berettas. Promote this as featuring Quota and Coast. Because we're not trying to push Twin Berettas no more. Yeah. I'm trying to push my own name, just like he is. So I know you think you're getting one over on us by getting us both on a track. But just do me that favor. Don't promote it as Twin Berettas. Give me my identity. Yeah. Because that's what you paid me for. But outside of that, you know, uh, nah, it's, not, nothing is ever so bad off to the, to the extent to where I don't want to do a song with nobody because fuck that dude. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, if... if if we end up on the same song together for however it came about, yeah. that's cool, man. I'm not looking to do another project with him, nothing like that. Yeah, I'm not trying to like. I'm not sitting here listening to my music, thinking, of, "Oh man, you know who would sound good on that?" Him. That's not the way I look at it. But if it ever came to be, man, so be it. That's what's up. Hey, yeah, yeah that'd be dope, man. And uh, what can we expect from uh, Cassette Coast? Looking forward. Moving forward, man. So. I'm with the platoon with La Machina now, which is uh, Garza and, and Rob G and Buns. Shout out to Money. Shout yep. out to GT Shout Garza. Shout out to Money. Uh, KP. So being under that umbrella, the next thing we, we finna do is platoon season two, which is a lot like a compilation project, but in-house. Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, all of us collectively put forth effort into completing this this project, and then afterwards we can branch off and do our solo stuff. Because I've already got a, a album ready to go, "Beautiful Monsters." Okay. This is gonna be my next solo album. Um, but yeah, uh, the first things first is Platoon season two. We're gonna come out in full force and rep La Machina. Make sure everybody knows yeah. that. You might be hearing a lot of other names in the space of Latin artists, but don't think that we washed up. <clears throat> yeah. Because we still go hard. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to remind people about that. Yeah. And we move forward with all the individual stuff. So other than you and GT Garza, who else is on the on the, uh, uh Garza, myself, Buns, Crystal Poppin. Um, Really, that's that's about it. I mean, we got Rob G. Mm -hmm. What uh, Rob G's more behind the scenes now. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted. He still come out and drop sixteen on us and just yeah. knock us all up, upside the head. But he wants his space to be more behind the scenes, making sure everything is running the way it should be. Because he's yeah. already been to the upper echelon of things and saw how yeah. things work so he's the best person for the job of making sure we're being directed the right way um but yeah outside of that that's pretty much the crew so the the solo project um you're sticking to a different formula or what can we expect from that album so the uh solo project is gonna be mostly rapping um, where I say I like to, normally I would keep a, a, a decent balance rapping versus singing. Mm -hmm. This project is leaning more towards rapping. Okay. 
Um, but, you know, I still got hooks that I sang on it. Um, but really all the verses, just me trying to, just trying to go in, mm -hmm. you know, featuring other people, mostly people from the crew um, or people like that I've come up with, like say Stunner mm -hmm. or Clever, you know, people I have a long history with just being cool with people that I respect as being artists themselves that know how to put words together. This is me going at them head to head, you know, like, like, man, if we're going to rap, let's rap. It's that type of project. Okay. Shay, we'll look forward to hearing it. Most yes, definitely, sir. man. And, um, I don't know if you want to, you got any shout outs that you want to give out. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, Shout out to Elm Street, you know what I mean? Appreciate you having me on. Appreciate you. Uh, shout out La Machina, man. Garza, Rob, Buns, KP, Fellow, you know, Money. Yeah, that's it, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, appreciate you coming through. You know what I mean? Like I said, been a big fan of your music. You know what I mean? And I like what you're doing. So I'm looking forward to to hear more coasts down the line. So uh, I appreciate you coming through, showing me the love, man. Coming all the way out here from Houston, man. I appreciate that and I salute you, man. Thanks for everything. This was my way of giving you your flowers, man. You know what I mean? You know, I think you're a very dope MC and uh, I can't wait to hear more. Thank you, bro. You know what I mean? And uh, appreciate it, can't thank you enough. You know, shout out to La Machina, GT Garza, Money, everybody in that camp. Hey. Appreciate it, man. Uh, as a matter of fact, GT was the one that kind of linked us up, right. you know what I mean, to make it happen. So, you know, shout out to him most definitely, man. So, like I said, thank you again for coming through, man. And uh, make sure to check out his music wherever you uh, get your major streaming music. Make sure to go cop it, you know what I mean? Check out his stuff on YouTube, you know what I mean? Link up, subscribe, like, comment, do all that. Yeah. And uh, like I say, man, keep your head. Keep your ear to the streets and I'll catch you on the block. It's your boy Money Elms, man. Peace.